this lecture is on uh, Hilbert transform in uh, condition monitoring. Well, uh, as you know, signal processing is a very important aspect or element on CBM. And uh, basically, depending on the type of signal, we can do analysis, be it in time domain or be it in frequency domain. The idea being that when you analyze a signal, I need to find out the features of that signal which actually relate to the machine in question or machine's condition. Right? So, you will come across the scenario, for example, just to recap some of our previous concepts, if a machine has different components A, B and C and if I put a transducer on the machine, I will get a signal in the time domain which is a dynamic signal and to do this I have to do, do some sort of a signal analysis. One very important signal analysis which we do of course, in a, apart from the time we can find out the time domain features. And uh, while we are discussing about the signal processing in time domain, I had shown you what are the different features of the signal which we can analyze and get. But in the frequency domain, to do frequency domain signal analysis. Okay. Now, in frequency domain, uh, depending on the two types of signal, which is either a stationary signal or another being a non stationary signal. Okay. So, just to recap in a stationary signal, we had the case of a signal where the pattern repeats and so on at all times. Okay. But in non stationary signals, I have just once. So, here if I consider this time, here if I consider this time, you will see The signal features are different in this case. Well, number is 1, 2, 3, here 1, 2, 3. So, you will see in the top one, 1, 2, 3, the signal is almost identical, and this could be, and if it is repeating, and this nature goes for all, at all times, this is a stationary signal as opposed to this being a non stationary signal. But then there are cases where the signals get modulated. and I will show you examples of modulated signals and this could be amplitude modulated or this could be frequency modulated. Pictorially to represent amplitude modulated signal or frequency modulated signals, you can visualize it this way. I will draw the envelope first. So, my signal is actually within this. So, so the frequency of the signal is nothing but f c and it is by amplitude modulating the signal by, by what I mean in a layman terms is this amplitude is increasing decreasing which could be because of load variations. So, what is happening that I am <coughs> conveying uh, information as an envelope. Okay. So, this is the modulated 
signals envelop and this frequency of this is nothing but f m okay in cbm such amplitude modulated signals happen in uh, because of load variations so once i record the solid red line i need to find out fm and fc okay this is one case and traditionally this is known as what is known as envelope analysis analysis many of the commercial software which are used for uh, cbm you will see there is an option of envelope analysis this is nothing but demodulating an amplitude modulated signal so envelope analysis as the name sounds is nothing but demodulating a amplitude modulated signal okay and traditionally when digital signal processing was not available people were doing demodulation by an analog electrical circuit where they squared it found out the rms and averaged it and so on and put a filter to do the envelope analysis to so that the meaningful information of the signal fm can be found out okay but hilbert transform is a technique which is implemented to find out modulation such modulations now another application you will see is in the frequency modulated signal so this is my frequency modulated signal because in frequency modulation as the name sounds the amplitude remains constant so the frequency is decreasing and then suddenly increasing and again decreasing and again increasing and so on so this is an fm signal and fm signal in cbm occurs because of speed variations particularly in machines which are operating which are supposed to operate at constant speed they normally do not because of uh, fluctuating power supply fluctuating power supply sometimes the fluctuating load on the system in loads okay will will basically produce speed variations and because of speed variations the amplitude is same but this frequency content of the signal is going to change so here again i am conveying a high frequency signal okay with uh, this is with an modulated signal if you see this this is the wavelength of the modulated signal okay because from a low frequency to another low frequency so i can see that so this kind of signal variations are there so again detection of fm in an modulated signal we will use what is known as hilbert transform okay i will give you another example how such fm signals can be generated imagine i have a shaft on to this i attach a disk okay and if you look at the disk suppose there are many slots on the disk you know which i am denoting by this green lines all the slots are equally spaced okay and they are physically actually a slots and so on. so this is a slot basically it looks like this so in one 
and I give a light and other end I have what is known as a photo detector. In other words, this is what is known as an optical encoder and usually the slots are about like you know maybe 1000 slots per disk. So, what happens if this shaft is rotating at a constant speed ok. So, it will generate 1000 pulses per revolutions. So, how does the pulse look like? This pulse will look like something like this. and so on this is the pulse train this is in time domain ok. Now, what happens if there is a this is at a constant speed the pulse spacing is a constant in the time domain. So, I can also find out the speed of this by the number of pulses per given time. So, because if, if I know there are 1000 pulses, I know whenever 1000 pulses is there, I will take the time taken and then I can find out the uh, mean speed. But imagine if there is a momentarily change in speed, the frequency content will change. So, how would the pulse look like? And then suddenly there is a change in the spacing. So, you see momentarily there is speed fluctuations, this is because of speed fluctuations. So, rather than finding out the speed, I can always find what is known as instantaneous angular speed, instantaneous angular speed. Okay. So, if there is a defect in the machine or there is a change in the instantaneous angular speed, this a frequency of this instant angular, instantaneous angular speed is an indication of the mechanical system which is causing such a speed difference and such optical encoders basically produce such frequency modulated signals and you will see through the maths in Hilbert transform how such analytical signals can be used to find out the uh, frequency envelope. So, Hilbert transform of a signal in the time domain is defined by this mathematical function. Okay. So, in terms of convolution, it is given by this expression, where x t is my original time domain signal. Okay. So, what is this analytic signal? So, analytic signals are those signals that have only one positive frequency content. So, we have one sided spectrum. This is in contrast to the Fourier transform methods where we had actually the negative frequencies part, but for CBM I did not discuss about the negative frequency part. But the advantage of using analytical function is or signal is the identification of envelope and instantaneous frequency becomes obvious once you find the analytic signal representation, because I require for my a m signal the envelope and for my f m signal I require what is known as the i s ok instantaneous or instantaneous frequency. And you will see in C B M when we talked about dynamic signals, they will be a amplitude modulated, frequency modulated or some other form of non stationary signal. So, Hilbert transform helps us identify an envelope or an frequency modulated signal. So, an analytical signal will be made by this where this is the analytical signal and 
my Hilbert transform, if I put it as the imaginary part, I will generate an analytic signal. This is my original signal. I uh, add an Hilbert transform as an imaginary part and get an analytic signal. So, the analytic signal can be represented either in the polar form where this is the envelope okay envelope of the signal and this is the phase so it is the envelope of the signal and phi t is the instantaneous angular phase signal and instantaneous frequency is nothing but 1 by 2 pi d phi by dt of the instantaneous phase signal so this is what we are obtaining from hilbert transform so any signal i can use its in the analytic form using an Hilbert transform and get the envelope or get the instantaneous phase and then get the instantaneous frequency and this has a lot of applications in CBM. For example, this is my envelope, this is an amplitude modulated signal. So, you see here the red function here is actually the envelope and this is an amplitude modulated signal. So, this can be very easily detected through an Hilbert transform. This is another signal okay, and you will see its envelope given here. As opposed to you see this, this is an frequency modulated signal. So, now the amplitudes are constant unlike the amplitude modulated signal where there is this considerable change in the amplitude modulations. Okay. In frequency modulated signals, I can see the instantaneous frequency and then you can see the instantaneous frequency of the frequency modulated signals. This is, this is how the envelope analysis is going to help us okay, look into these signals. Now, I will give you an example in, so there is a software called MATLAB which we will discuss in some of the subsequent classes. Through MATLAB, I can get the Hilbert transfer of any signal and just do the envelope detection. But envelope detection or uh, amplitude modulated signals in CBM works in many areas and some of them could be in bearings. So, in bearings we have amplitude modulated signals in gears we have amplitude modulated signals, fans or blowers, where there is considerable speed fluctuation we have frequency modulated ok. So, we have to use such Hilbert transform to find out either the envelope or instantaneous angular speed or frequency. Okay. Now, imagine I have a gearbox. So, if I put an optical encoder here, and imagine if all of these this has a frequency f 1, 
this has a frequency f 2, this has a frequency f 3 and there is a gear meshing frequency here and so on. So, if I correct the optical encoder pulse okay, and do the frequency domain of the IAS, okay, I will see a speed variation in a particular variation and this could be only few orders. So, if this is f 1, this is f 2, f 3. So, I can see at whatever frequencies these variations are there, I can find out that what is perhaps the defect is in the shaft which is f 2 or shaft which is f 1. So, this is how it is going to help you. You see in this kind of a study, we never did any vibration measurements. Vibration measurements is not required. is not required vibration measurement is not required rather we will just measure an optical encoder. So, you see the convenience of doing CBM through Hilbert transform if I have a pulse strain out of an IS uh, out of an optical encoder and today you see all of these machines which be it an uh, CNC machine okay, be it a gearbox be it a precision machine for many of the speed monitoring and control, they have optical encoders. So, taking pulses from optical encoder, okay, I can do what is estimate the estimate IAS instant and see at what frequencies this IAS is varying. But only the catch is I require a high sampling data acquisition device to calculate the pulse strain or to capture the pulse strain. But again the beauty of this is you know you could be just having a pulse signal. Of course, you know now with uh, the new technologies of modulation and Wi Fi transmission is suppose right at that encoder which you know uh, an encoder is a very relatively very cheap device compared to a conventional virus and measurement by an accelerometer. So, encoder is very economic compared to accelerometer. Okay. So, I can all do is just measure the pulse strain and then uh, use Hilbert transform and get the frequency content of this signal. Uh, in, in our uh, laboratory, uh, we have uh, done the IS estimations for finding out engine firing frequencies for gearbox fault detection. Okay. I will uh, just uh, for the students who are attending this course, I will give you a definition of engine firing frequency. For example, in an IC engine, whether it is 4 stroke or 2 stroke. So, if it is 2 stroke, so in every rotation, I have 1 engine firing, but as in 4 stroke for every 2 rotations I have 1 engine firing. When engine fires basically there is a combustion. So, this combustion creates a pressure wave 
Okay. So, this pressure wave is responsible for the dynamics of the engine and this is responsible for the vibrations in the engine. So, in one case if n is the rpm, so n by 60 is in hertz divide by if it is a single cylinder engine when n multiplied by 1 by k where n is the engine speed in rpm, n is the number of cylinders and k is equal to 1 if it is a 4 stroke. sorry so it's two stroke and it is equal to 1 just to be clear k is equal to 1 when it is two stroke and is equal to 2 when it is four stroke okay so if an engine is running at 1200 rpm, this is 4 cylinders, if it is 4 stroke, the engine firing frequency firing engine is nothing but 1200 by 60 times 4 times 1 by 2, okay. so 2400 by 60 is 40 hertz. Now, if we have a modulation around the engine frequencies, firing frequencies, because of a speed fluctuation, I can sense that by putting an optical encoder at the output shaft, getting a Hilbert transform and doing a an signal analysis. So, many of these examples you will see uh, on um, IS in my book and details you can find at my website. Thank you.